In the last episode, just before taking the dangerous Wolf Creek Pass, I realized that the Postal Jeep had some brake problems. After we repaired the Jeep in the Days Inn parking lot in Alamosa, the Jeep proved itself worthy driving over the perilous Rockies. The Postal Jeep is not a four-wheel drive vehicle, but nevertheless, here I am in Moab, Utah, ready to see what this Jeep could do on the rocks. I took to a trail called Fins and Things. It was an easier trail among off-road folks, but still a struggle for my two-wheel drive postal jeep. As long as I don't let off the gas entirely, it won't cut out, which is good. A little bit of left foot braking. Wow, I'm really giving it a lot of gas. I don't know how we're gonna get up this, but we're gonna go for it. And it just shuts off when it's on declines. Oh, come on, Postal. You better fire back up. Oh, boy. So the fuel cuts out when it hits a bump that's too hard. <laughs> uh... Gotta be smooth with it. I don't know what's exactly what's going on, but onward to victory. Superior geometry of my little cube on wheels, the ground clearance and short overhangs, was great. Okay, I'm on one of the easiest off-road trails in Moab. Really easy, we, we barely even got started. And uh, the Jeep just stopped going forward. Okay, so I put it in uh, first, nothing, second, nothing, reverse, zero, it will not move. So I checked the transmission fluid. Maybe we should just add some fluid. I traversed slick rocks and the DJ climbed like a billy goat, though there was a setback. I broke down to the point of needing a tow. What was that? I had met some members of a Hummer online forum, and they had agreed to babysit me on the trail. So when I pushed my Jeep too hard and it broke down, these guys helped me out. I hadn't driven all the way to Utah just to go a few miles off-road and then give up. So I stayed up late with a few new friends and got to wrench. One of those evenings, I slept in an RV owned by a gentleman named Bill. And then I woke up the next morning ready to hit the trails. Okay, I'm gonna show you how I refill the tank on this Postal Jeep. Now I put my ear right up against it, and I listen. It's gonna be a high pitch once it starts to get high. I have to let go at precisely the right moment. There. All right, well I missed it by a smidge. Usually I can get it. I have to admit that I broke in the cardinal rule of off -roading. This time I was completely alone. Look at that grade right there. We're about to take it in the postal Jeep. Here we go. so much for that. All right, well, let's try again. Okay, there it is. Woohoo! Just went down that grade in the Postal Jeep. A little bit of couple of battle scars on my fuel tank there you can see but my recently installed transmission cooler is doing an exceptional job this line is pretty hot this line is ice cold so the trains will be fine okay so I'm at a point on fins and things where I need to turn around 
Uh, unfortunately, that means I have to go back up this ridiculously steep grade. There's not a chance in hell I'm making it up. I'm gonna try it, but I'm gonna have to get winched up this, 100%. Really no point in trying, but you know, I can barely make it up this part of it. Oh, oh man. Look at this. It's already giving me grief, and I'm not even, I haven't even started the grade. Wide open throttle. We got nothing. There's just nothing there. Ugh. There's nothing. We're gonna have to get winched up here. Grave error. I decided to take Project Postal onto fins and things with no one else, just me. Cause I figured it's fine, right? No, no it's not. This thing, it's not, the two wheel drive isn't the problem. It's the lack of low range. The transmission's overheating. I'm getting half, you know, part the way up the slope. My foot is all the way on the gas and the vehicle's not going anywhere. It's not turning the tires. It's not doing anything. The transmission overheats like pretty much instantly. And whenever I hit a bump, the gas, the gas cuts out and the engine, so the engine shuts off. Right now I'm actually running, I'm running off of a jerry can, a jerry can wedged under the hood. That's it. That's what I'm running off. And so I'm trying to backtrack and just get off this trail. Literally every incline I get to, I feel a deep sense of dread because I have to let the thing cool off and as I start to go up, I don't know if the train is going to die in the middle of the grade. <laughs> It'll be fine though. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <sighs> Basically, the lesson here is do not, do ooh, ooh not go off-roading in a vehicle without low range. Do not do it. Your trains will overheat, most likely. Uh, just, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. Transmission, it just won't move the car forward. I have to let it cool down, and I'm pretty far, I made it pretty far down the trail, so it's, it's gonna take forever to get back. I mean, I'm gonna have to basically use, use up my transmission on the inclines and then let it rest on the, on the peaks, let it cool down, and then, Again, as I go up inclines, use it up. It's just it's gonna take a long time. This was, this was a mistake, but this is the problem when you don't have low range. After a lot of thought, my solution was to hit the grades with much more speed than anyone ever should. We can totally do this. You got this, little postal. You got this. Yes. The postal continues. It continues its off road journey. Oh, looks like the mirror just got caught on the, on the tree there. It's okay. We gotta keep going. Let's go, Postal. Let's go. Oh my gosh, the Postal Jeep from dead to off road. Oh. The amount of rust I'm probably leaving in my wake and oil. I don't even want to think about it. Let's go, the Postal. Oh yes, the Postal. Okay, the engine cut off. That's okay. It was dangerous, but better than being stuck out there alone. Oh my gosh, I am so happy. I, I legitimately did not think I would make it out of the trail. The transmission was failing. I'd put it into first or drive or second, nothing. It would not go forward, reverse didn't work. I waited a, a few minutes and then eventually it worked again, but only for a little bit and then it would cut out again. The engine kept shutting off. No matter what I did, it would shut off when I hit a bump, so I had to put my foot on the gas to keep the engine running, but even then, my transmission would fail on the inclines, and I'd be stuck, and I'd have to roll back. Oh, it was bad. I, I honestly thought this thing was, was done. It, oh, it was, this was the most terrifying off-road experience I've ever had. Because I had to, whenever I was going down and I saw a, an upgrade coming, I had to use momentum, and I had to go up these hills over these rocks at speed which you don't want to do, you're going to break stuff. So I'm just like blasting through over rocks way too fast in the postal and it was just shaking all over the place. The whole top was just the doors. It was, oh, oh my gosh. But I'm out and now I got to go back to Michigan. I'm so happy I got out of that. Oh. I was filled with gratitude that my stupidity hadn't stranded me 1,700 miles from home. And I felt lucky to be able to drive out of the buttes, maces, and arches that lined the long, empty roads of rural Utah. Now it's time to drive the postage home.